is not symptomatic but has had an exposure, then going to an urgent care clinic or to a CVS to get nasal swab testing would be um, would be uh, helpful there. But there are different components to immunity, and I think one of the things about sound is that you know, and I, I think um, I'm going to do more want to do more research on this, but I think sound can actually help the immune system as well. Um, so I'm curious your thoughts there on that, Trish. There are some vaccines being you know, in place. We know that vaccines are typically about 50% effective on some of these uh, uh, other vaccines like flu vaccines. So I think we have to hope for a good vaccine, but also you know, want to improve our own immune systems here. And then we do have a flu vaccine that we're offering that is coming in the next week or two, I believe. And it's egg-free, preservative-free. Uh, mercury free and um, contact Jennifer Thomas if you are interested in that. We do have an integrated vaccine protocol in our clinic where we want to support immune system activity with IV nutrients, optimizing the gut microbiome, and especially getting good sleep. A good night's sleep uh, greater than six hours is going to help improve vaccine immune antibody response. So those are the kind of slides I had. I'm back from the beach. Thank you for taking a break with me uh, last Thursday. I hope you all enjoyed your Thursday. Um, last Thursday too, and glad to be back with all of you today. So here's our schedule for August. Um, we had Shannon do yoga on August 6th. We have Trish today, and then next week we have Colleen doing herbal medicine. Um, so Trish, I, I think I said uh, some things introduction about Trish, but I really appreciate you being on today uh, for this uh, webinar. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say and experience here about sound healing. Well, thank you. I am equally excited to share this work and to see you again. And, uh, and I, I'm actually quite thrilled at this auspicious time. What a, uh, a period of expanse and uh, completion that we're in, um, both biologically, metaphysically, spiritually. There's so much going on that we are um, in a reboot, I think. Uh, and a reset for our lives moving forward. Um, my experience with sound was quite accidental. I did not intend to um, change or fix or heal because I didn't know one could. Once I had my diagnosis of chronic hepatitis C and stage four liver disease, I had uh, accepted what the doctors had said, which is prepare. Your, get your affairs in order. Uh, you have about nine months to 12 months to, to live in, in relation to the way the virus was mutating. I had accepted that, so I just moved, moved on in a way. I mean, I, he, uh, I was put on a, a, a dose or a combination of interferon and ribavirin that uh, they were just testing out at the time. This was in 2000. Um, and so there, were, there was some hope, but there was not any conclusive evidence that this was going to be a treatment that had, would work for me. And uh, what I did was um, <laughs> upon receiving that news, I went shopping. I went to the gem show, it was in town. I walked into a tent and saw a display of Tibetan bowls, was completely transfixed. I saw the gentleman play the bowl. I asked if I could do it. I, he gave it to me. The bowl immediately made sound for me. And I bought the bowl and came home and started playing. I, this was a, a new world for me. It was uh, uh, something that I had no understanding of what might happen. I didn't, uh, so I didn't lock my brain into thinking I've got to fix, uh, I've got to heal, I've got to get rid of anything. So with the spirit of, of that non-resistance, I just played my bowl and made tone, tones that were non, you know, sequential. They were, um, I moved through the different overtones. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just making vowel tones. How, how many well, years ago was this, Trish? This was in 1999, the end of 1999. And I had, um, it, it, started to, I mean, I was taking the chemotherapy. So my body was starting to do the, the typical response of weight loss, hair loss, um, night sweats, mm -hmm. quit sleep. All the while I started to create a, a sort of a language um, umbrella for myself. And 
I had accepted that there was one paradigm uh, that was medical science that said, you are uh, dying, you have this, uh, and the prognosis is that. I created a secondary paradigm, which was what I know to be true. And what I knew to be true was that I was in a state of well being despite the fact that my body was breaking down. So yeah, I would yeah. say this simultaneously yes, um, my hair is falling out. Yes, I feel tired. Yes, I can't sleep. <laughs> and I'm in a state of well being. Yeah, Not yeah. fully understanding that speaking those words out loud was actually informing the cell structure and the biodynamics and the yeah. rhythm of my own body. So it, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that that was happening at that, at that time. Today, yeah. of course, it is very much a part of what I teach uh, as, uh, in relation to sound healing. So within four months of doing this and taking, following through with the protocol, I um, was called into the office and he was taking my RNA tests all along every week. But he said, you know, we're, we're confused. <laughs> he didn't say he was confused, but he said we're guardedly optimistic, but I could see he was confused and perplexed. He said, you know, you, you don't, aren't showing any trace of the virus right now in your body. That's and then amazing. he quickly said, don't get, this is really a, an anomaly. This will come back. So don't, 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 don't get your hopes up. Right? Don't get your hopes up. So uh, I thanked him and I just kept on doing what I did. And uh, again, not understanding that every time I made sound and every time the bowl supported that sound, there was change going on in my body. I didn't understand the vagus nerve at that point. I didn't understand what how my body was getting oxygenated every time I made a long tone. So <clears throat> I just continued doing that. Two months out, um, the as I leave after yet another reading on my RNA test, the nurse calls me into her office and she says, uh, you need to understand why he's uh, really uh, perplexed by your situation. She said, you, you don't have a genotype. And in those days they were genotyping. She said, you don't have a genotype that would have responded to interferon. So there's no medical reason for you to be well. <clears throat> and that was the moment wow. when my yeah. brain exploded and I realized sound must have had something to do with this. Absolutely. What was it? Yeah, wow. So that's how I got started. And uh, so, most of us, when we think of sound healing, we think of music. We think of, um, you know, music therapy, which is all very much a part of the sound healing experience. Uh, we think of crystal bowls. Um, that is also a, a part of, very much a part of our world with, with sound these days. Yet I also want to underscore the importance of spoken word as sound healing, because every part of what we uh, of our biodynamics is influenced by the way we speak about ourselves. What are the now, conversations we're having? Are, are you saying are you saying external uh, words like not just singing but also speaking, Absolutely. and also how we speak to ourselves internally too, right? Absolutely. So if we have a running tape of, oh, you idiot! How did you think to do that? Why you're not getting anything done? Find your yeah. purpose in life. Well, yeah. All of that is holding a pattern energetically in the body that is maintaining that thought process. Right. So right. if the desire to have something is couched in a way that you want to have, let's say, I want to get well, what is the dominant frequency in that statement? Want. So the body is not assessing whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It just follows what the dominant frequency is. So if your greatest passion your greatest, uh, 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 you know, desire is in the wanting to be well, then that's what it's going to hold. It's going to maintain the state for you to continue to want. Got it. So in the language uh, reframing, uh, it's, it's an imperative to move into a state of having. So when I was in a, my state, uh, I, I would say I am in a state of well-being, even though I was, my hair was falling out. So I would acknowledge the physical obvious experience and then claim the truth. 
I am in a state of well-being regardless of what is happening. Now I can understand how that's uh, sort of counterintuitive for most of us. Yet when I, because I had been working with sound all along, I, that became an easier uh, bridge to cross. So it wasn't implausible. It was actually something that I could conceive. And, and it sounded it sounded like if I could if I could kind of uh, just to talk talk back to that uh, not talk back to that but um, just to what what I got from what you said with your story is that you've you've essentially you your cells were feeling well like even though you had the medical diagnosis and test it sounded like you were feeling well like the vitality was there so you were speaking your truth when you said you were you were you, you have well-being right uh true except i was ex also exper experiencing the typical byproducts of chemical therapy so right. i was weak right. and i Got was it. tired i wasn't getting enough sleep i did have night yeah. sweat yeah uh, yet I knew, and I can't tell you how I knew, except that that's one of the, one of the tenets of sound when you start working with sound as I do today, is that there is a, there is a capacity to see a bigger picture, uh, a more intuitive understanding of how the body wants to move back into wholeness, to move back into its natural kind of helps us connect to the universal field, right? We know that like, music is a universal language, sound is a universal yes. language. Yes. And we live in that sea of vibration. So yeah. when we are tuning our human instrument, we are now in flow, greater flow with greater ease and greater harmony with the flow of nature herself. So that's our um, and nature is our really our, our true parent, if you will. This is we have all that is in nature within us. Yes. So it's you know, and it's interesting. We're talking about virus at this point of our lives, um, I, and part of what I began to understand is virus doesn't propagate on its own. It needs to have a host cell in order to mutate and propagate. <clears throat> I know you're going to start your, but can, can I ask a question about that before I forget? So um, I was reading this morning on, on sound vibration and how the human body has a certain frequency of health, sort of like, you know, higher vibration tends to be more spiritual and like is associated with better health. Is that something you found in your research on sound vibration and, um, and also that bacteria and viruses and other kind of organisms that might be detrimental have a lower vibration so that when we're when we're at a lower vibration ourselves we're at a you know more susceptible you know more at risk to be infected or, or to have that infection catch and when we're at a higher vibration we're not as likely to be um, susceptible to that our immune systems are stronger absolutely and that vibration corresponds with the vitality of the cell so yeah. this, when we are working with sound, you are able to if infuse um, vitality into the cell. A cell that's stressed is going to become dense, as you were saying, a lower frequency. It cannot, in fact, when we're stressed, it's like the cell shuts down. There's no intercellular fluid that is, you know, passing neurons to everywhere and having conversation <laughs> about being alive. Yeah. Uh, when we start to work with vocal sound in particular, uh, we are infusing the cell with vitality, which means, in fact, there is a study where cancer cells um, were, uh, they were exploring the impact of sound on the cell. And it was discovered that the human voice uh, as a carrier wave of consciousness can actually explode uh, destabilize is what they, uh, how they referred to it, but you can see it in, in photography. Uh, it destabilizes the aberrant frequency or, um, in any, any, any human voice or, you know, speaking in a, in a human voice, in a what One voice tone, tone. So, uh, the, and it's a, about a tone, not so much, uh, saying, good morning. How are you? Please pass the salt Got it. that at some level can become a higher frequency and carries a lot more information than our typical way of speaking. Mm -hmm. But it's a, and when you're working with tone, especially the vowel tones, like one is, could be ah, 
Ah. So just allowing that full sound to extend all the way to the end of the breath, they started to see how the cell is invigorated. And wow. by repeated vocalizing, and they did this study with several women who had uh, forms of uh, cancerous tumors in various parts of their body. And they found that over a, a, a month long period of vocalizing, toning, open tone, that this, the cancer cells were destabilized and were reduced to nothing. Yeah, so improving the terrain in functional medicine, we talk about improving the, the terrain, terrain to make it inhospitable for the cancer cells, right? Exactly, because yeah. it can only exist because of the cell right. that it grows in and yeah. propagates from. That's um, amazing. The thing that creates this uh, condition in the cell and the body is stress. Yeah. So the number one killer, I would say, is how our, how our lives of stress um, are really the fertile ground for dis-ease. And you know, here we are in the pandemic where so many people are, are operating primarily out of fear of not catching this. Well, that creates conditions in the body that keeps us in a stress state. So sound can move you through that state into a state of ease, into a state of non-resistance. When the body's not holding the stress or resistance, your body is able to produce the enzymes, the hormones, all the, the pharmaceuticals you need in your body to maintain well-being. The sound is, is restoring the innate capacity for healing in a yes. way. Yes. Yeah. And I find it a compliment to all modalities. So mine was a compliment to Western medicine. So here I had chemical therapy going into my body. Uh, I will, you know, it, the sound made it possible for my body to use what it needed and reject the rest. In There's fact, not many side effects to a sound healing, it sounds like. No, no. <laughs> Although I do carry insurance just in case <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> someone finds that an open tone could destabilize them. To yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> not going to happen. Right. And it penetrates the entire system. Yeah. So when I work with specific sounds and uh, you have, I sent a, a had a, um, uh, a, a, a doc that you can, that we can hand out to everyone of specific vowel tones that I used to, um, to bring my body back to wholeness. But it's, it's not that the sound was a specific note, which is often, often and typically uh, referred to in sound healing today. They think, uh, or the common thought is that, for instance, a root chakra is a C tone, or uh, the second chakra is a D tone. The body is not structured on a chromatic scale. The human body is structured on a universal resonant, the universal tuning system. So your body is a unique, instrument that carries its own musicality mm. so your root chakra is not necessarily going to respond to any one particular note on any one particular day because of uh, the fact that you know if if you just allow the body to be in the tone that's the deepest for instance in the root chakra sound that, that i've written out that sound will be different from day to day depending on how deep you can can produce the sound how much stress you're carrying i didn't know that i didn't realize that i thought it was kind of like root chakra is a c and you know everything but it sounds like it's a little bit more individualized in that very much so very much so can, can we go through some uh, uh uh i don't know uh maybe you demonstrating or <laughs> overtones right. or you know something where... absolutely absolutely so um the the root itself uh is a, a tone of U U H, so that makes the sound of uh, almost like you're saying. Well, in fact, I remember back in the '90s, the young people I worked with used to say "duh." <laughs> Just, Duh. You said okay, um, uh, like uh. it's that kind of sound where you're dropping the tongue back in the throat, softening the vocal folds. It almost feels like the glands are expanding, mm -hmm. and you make the sound that's articulated from the depths of the intercostal muscles. So you're, you're breathing into your second two ribs. 
you expand the breath there and then uh, uh and I, and i think uh, would that be okay if everyone at home uh, listening here could they could try it out yes uh, here and just kind of okay yeah. so you said oh uh, something uh, like that so do you want your mouth open or you'd want your mouth open because the tonal okay. architecture is also important for how the brain changes Mm -hmm. See, so you had asked earlier about can anybody's voice do this? Yes, and most of us have swallowed our voices, silenced and diminished our voices, so we don't have the full harmonic capacity available to us. These tones actually improve the vocal uh, spectrum of overtones in the body, and those overtones are what change the neural network. And that's that's what, why. What is an overtone? Can you can you just uh, teach te te just that? Yeah. For instance, let's say I make the sound of oh. There are layers, very subtle. In some of these tones, you can actually hear them. There's one particular in the in the throat chakra. It sounds like this. You hear the overtone? Mm, oh, the okay. So the overtone is oh, like created yeah. off of the fundamental tone. Off of the vibration, there's another right frequency. Most times, it. our ears can't hear it, but yeah. in that particular throat chakra tone, it's very obvious. But yeah. all the all of the tones that we make are producing overtones. What's happening with our attention with on each of these particular chakra areas? is an expansive um, vibratory uh, breadth that is uh, affecting whatever in whatever part of the body of your lower quadrant of your body is affected so these tones are used as prescriptive uh, sounds that will uh, address a whole spectrum of things that we can't identify in my personal um, practice I would not be um, practicing good, good sound healing work if I were to tell somebody what I think is going on. First of all, that's a mental assessment, has nothing to do be with the truth necessarily because I can't see inside your body. Your body knows your sound prescription of these tones will go exactly where your body needs that food, that nutrition, that boost of energy. Could, so could that's you go what, through the, the sound uh, chakras a little bit? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but uh, you know, in terms of like which maybe organs or especially for immune health, but I think, you know, what would you recommend in general? Uh, but I, I know, I don't know if everyone here is, I know some of, some of, some people may be familiar with your work here on sound healing that are on the call today. Uh, some may not be. Uh, what is, what's kind of the idea of the, the chakras and, and, you know, how that's related to uh, sound healing? The chakras are part of an ancient tradition. However, we modernized it in, in the early 20th century and made it specific to certain points in the body. Mm -hmm. The ancient Vedics would talk about it in terms of a prescriptive area. So the sound that is used for these chakra points is really expanding through different quadrants of the body. Yeah, let, let, let's if we could do some uh, maybe maybe if you could demonstrate if you don't mind and have have uh, people could kind of follow along and practice at home that might be Absolutely. a good good thing. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So the root chakra uh, is the area is located uh, right at the tailbone. That's where your attention goes. So that's what that sound U U H vibrates at a low frequency because that part of the body responds, the denser part of the body responds to that tone. So, uh, uh, okay. Second one is about two fingers down from the navel. This is the midsection. This corresponds to, um, you know, the, the, the lower intestines uh, and uh, can, uh, you know, these first two actually work with the whole intestinal health. And, so like if someone has gut health issues or wants to improve their gut, yes. these are tones they could, they could be uh, chanting themselves, I, I guess uh, that would be. 
Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So the second chakra then uh, that's uh, pointed right at the sec the midsection of the lower part of the abdomen is double O H. Oh. Double O H. Okay. So you can see how round my mouth is. I'm really shaping the overtones. Oh. oh. Yeah. And um, then the next one is right at the solar plexus. The the base of the sternum. Mm -hmm. So right here. So in making this sound, you're going to stretch the mouth across your face. Eh, eh. That helps to shape the the tone, but also helps the placement of the sound because what you're doing is going to be feeling the intercostal muscle support, but your lower two ribs are going to be expanding and contracting. So the sound is created after you fill the lower portion of your lungs up and then start to squeeze that diaphragmatic band. Eh. Eh. It's kind of like if you're if you're tightening your gut and trying to speak at the same time. Eh, eh, eh. So that's the sound that comes through. Though it's not a in burst, it's not staccato. It's actually a long tone. The whole while, you make sure you soften the throat. You don't want to tighten your vocal folds because that will strain your your throat, your your vocal folds. So yeah. the sound goes like this. It's very breathy. All the while, I was concentrating on keeping my my throat soft and open while tightening the diaphragmatic brand, band around the, the base of the sternum. Got it. So that's really a powerful tone for gut health. This is also a tone to uh, help with heartburn. If you have food that's mm. caught in mm -hmm. the duodenum or can't mm -hmm. get to the duodenum. Oh, yeah. The pylorus, because what you're doing is is vibrating each of these sphincters. So you have the root is a sphincter that's opening, softening, that tightens due to stress. You also have the stomach issues that tighten the sphincter and your, your digestive processes are thwarted. So this helps with um, passing, keeping the food moving to the digestive system. That's great, yeah, thank you, that's great. And then the next one is, is a little softer now. So these first three are really what we call the manifesting currents. These are deep, these are gross, meaning big and dense. Now we're moving into the heart center, which is much more refined. So now we're moving into the ascending energies or frequencies. So the sound of the heart center is next. So it's right positioned right in the center of the chest, not in the heart itself, mm -hmm. but in the chest. So open ah. So you want your mouth at least two or three fingers wide. Okay. Ah. That's a mid-range tone. So you're not going very high, but you're not low like you used to go. You're, the hertz is different now because you're dealing with a more refined energy of the heart center. Ah. Ah. Uh, okay. Yes. Nice. And then the next one is the throat. Now this one works with the thyroid. So, uh, and it's right between the clavicles. So you bring your, your attention to the throat point. This is a triple O. So it's a little higher, not in the falsetto yet, but it's a little higher than what we just made. And you're shaping the mouth around the, the teeth that are open, but the mouth now is funneling it into almost as though you're gonna make a whistle sound. Ooh, that's the sound. So it sounds like this. Ooh. Some of it may be a little lower for you. Ooh. So that sound is very, you can, hear in a more obvious way the overtone so that triple o is the throat uh yeah. which can get very congested in fact people with throat issue issues esophageal issues like uh, what about what about mucus like feeling like mucus in your throat and things like that yeah well i'd also cut out 
Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go see our nutrition team for that. Yeah. There's yeah. another, yeah, there's an there's another, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even with that, you know, you can still, your body will still be producing mucus. Yeah. But you're, you know, and I'll talk more after I finish uh, demonstrating these about the, the vagus nerve and what is going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we have some questions about that too. So that'd be great. That'd be great. Wonderful. So now we move from this into what is called the third eye chakra or the brow chakra. What this is, is the pineal gland. To make this sound, you would say the word he, he, and, and you notice where your tongue is. Well, you just keep the tongue when you're saying the word he at the floor, the tip of the tongue at the floor of the mouth, but you push, you know, the back of the tongue forward a little bit not to block the, the soft palate, but just below it. And that's gonna focus the sound right to the pineal. You said the tongue is at the bottom of the mouth or the top? The tongue, tip of the tongue is at the floor of the mouth, right okay. at the back teeth, the bottom teeth. Okay. He, he. So, okay. and you, when you make that sound, he, you're moving the sound through the sinuses and the mouth. So nose and mouth is what produces this sound because that's going to be stimulating the pineal gland. The uh, and these two glands, the pineal and the pituitary are key for opening the intuitive thought process or what some would call the genius brain. Mm. So high E, your falsetto, you may consciously think you can't sing high, you can't get high. I'm suggesting that your body knows how to do this if you keep the sound forward in the sinuses, we call it the face mask, and you lift your, your upper tongue up a little bit so that you're making sure you keep the sound forward, and it sounds like this. So that sound is coming through the nose and my mouth. I'll show you a way to check to see if you're doing that, just that. As I start, I'll squeeze my nose. If it changes the sound, I'm doing it correctly. If it doesn't, I'm doing it, I'm throwing this, that high pitch through my throat and it's not going to be stimulating the, the pineal. So here's the proper way to, to do it with an, uh, a way to test. <laughs> So it blocks the sound. So mm -hmm. that way you know that you're doing it correctly. So the note it's vibrating it. up there. Yeah. Right. If you're yeah. doing it incorrectly, you can make the sound, but there's no change in the sound because I'm throwing it through my voice box. I want to be making sure you make this sound through <laughs> the sinuses that you bring out your inner Jersey person. <laughs> you bring I'll, I'll that through the note. <laughs> I'll practice that one with you in a private session. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is stimulating the, the pineal gland, which is waking up uh, and creating coherence between the pineal and the pituitary. It's a kind yeah. of um, flow uh, that happens between the two of them. And the, the pineal, final pineal gland is so important for melatonin as well. And we know that, um, you know, it really helps reduce inflammation as well. So that's a really okay. good. Then the final crown chakra is the pituitary, the master gland. So it's a high M. So we're still working with the principle of the falsetto. Your sound is going to be forward in the sinuses, the face mask. But now your mouth is going to be closed and the sound is only going to come through the nose. So it's high M, and this is what it sounds like. And it's as though you're passing this sound through a tiny pinhole. You know, don't need to force it. What these two specific cranial tones do are um, uh, balancing the every cranial nerve. So this opens up a huge spectrum of wellness that when you're making these tones with every tone, you're stimulating the vagus nerve. Yeah. 
When you're stimulating the vagus nerve, you're maintaining vagal tone. When maintaining vagal tone, you're reducing depression, you're boosting immune function, you're regulating the parasympathetic, you're, you're stimulating and activating all of those juicy hormones that help you feel good, the serotonin, the oxytocin, the, the dopamine. So all of these are regulated through the body as needed. So when you're working with these sounds, you're activating the body's natural pharmacy and the body knows what to do. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. This is how I realized I was able to heal because I got out of the way. I stopped trying to fix, change, manage, heal anything. I just, in fact, I didn't know at the time that I was just letting something happen, but that's in fact what was happening. How, how did you learn this, the sounds and the sound healing in uh, yourself? Yeah. Tones were something that I learned back in the 70s when I was part of the Omega Theater Company in Boston, uh, I was an actor in that company. And the Sufi Healing, it was a Sufi-based company, the Sufi Healing Order stopped by one day and taught us these tones. Well, in my 24-year-old mindset, I thought these tones were strictly an actor tool. So when I started my own company in 1984 of young people in recovery from addiction, I used these tones as the basis for their work because we were creating stories out of their own, their own lives. And yeah. What I saw happen to them shocked me, how they became in, emotionally literate. They became heart-centered. Their brains changed. Um, they were able to work together as an ensemble. It was really stunning. Again, not really thinking that the sounds were doing anything to their brain. Yeah, I, I have so many questions for you. I, I want to ask one question and get to the Q and A here because we have some good, really good questions from, from our listeners here. Okay. Um, one thing is you were talking about how to stimulate the vagus nerve, the sounds can uh, really help to do that. Are you talking about all the sounds in the different chakras, or those or those top two sounds? No, it, all of them. Oh, okay. In fact, speaking can stimulate vagal tone, uh, not to the degree that these open tones do, because we've got the added benefit of making sure you're opening that mouth and creating overtones. In, any, any sort of speaking, I'm assuming not arguments or you know things like that, but. Well, yes. I mean, there's a, there is uh, an, a, an understanding that, yeah, as long as we're moving sound through the larynx, Okay, the got it. Vagus nerve. Yeah, that's right. There's yeah, going yeah. to be benefit, uh, but optimizing that is is what's happening with these specific tones because most of us don't speak using a full throated or and I mean I don't mean that like volume wise, but a full capacity sound right. that is resonating down in the deep chambers of your body. So when you listen to someone like Maya Angelou or uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. or yeah great orators, yeah. they were speaking with the whole body. Yeah. Most of us have silenced, squashed, or suppressed that lower body um, access so that we're only speaking out of and supported by the thoracic chamber. And it, it sounds like posture too, right? Posture probably opening up the diaphragm and the chest and everything. So all of that part of, you know, when you look at posture, when you look at deep breathing from the lower uh, lobes of your lungs, mm -hmm. all of that sets us up to step into greater power. Right. That's the ultimate piece. When we talk about finding our voices, it's not just about an intellectual process. It is a whole body process of resonance. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Um, Christine asked, what sound might you recommend we could use during our day to help us stay grounded and less stressed? Wonderful question. And there are, you know, I would use anyone that feels comfortable, any of the vowels that you relate to, because that's an indicator that you're listening to your body and your body is dictating it. So that's what we want. Do, to do. do you believe in creating your own mantra? Like, you know, some you know, like create your own sound mantra and things like that, or? Well, it's in, in a way working with these prim primordial tones is your own mar uh, mantra force. Yeah. Because your focus is going to the area where you're bringing the greatest amount of attention. So in, in theory, any of those sounds could help someone stay yes. uh, grounded. My favorite stressful. is the open ah. It's the easiest to do. 
uh, I'm sitting in traffic. Uh, that's the, know. sorry, that's the root. Which one is that again? No, the awe is the heart. Oh, the heart, yeah. Okay. Open oh, tongue. Okay. If you're in public and you are around a bunch of grumpy people or, <laughs> uh, you know, the, you're, you're just stressed, you can't find your way, etc. I would recommend humming. Humming is a powerful um, stimulant. It's yeah. also regulating and and. Uh, I find that too personally. Humming really really helps. And any specific humming tone? I, I know. I mean, yeah. classically we have C through C through B with different. I think there's different chakras, but in any tone, yeah. But might be. the 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 notation is immaterial. Right. It's where your body feels its yeah. most comfort yeah. at okay. that moment is the frequency the body most needs. And, and then how, how long do you have to do either uh, uh, humming or chanting with overtones of what's of your, your breath. Just, you know. yeah, okay. And then I would do it again. And if you're walking through New York City or Chicago or Tucson, <laughs> Arizona, no one's gonna hear you because the yeah. ambient sound of the world is around you. So, uh, you know, I've walked through New York singing or producing these primordial tones. No one knows me. You know? yeah. <laughs> But They're humming all, yeah. is a great way to just self-soothe, self-stimulate the vagus nerve and let your body move back into a state. Yeah, of I totally agree. Yeah, humming, uh, chanting, doing these primordial sounds. R R thank you. Ronnie asked, uh, can one purchase singing bowls for their own self-healing? Uh, I guess, and that does help a lot. Um, you know, I, I, do have a, I do have one Tibetan singing bowl I use here in the office and you know, I bring it, this is an A sound, but this is kind of nice and then I can hum with it or you know can right. freeze with it but what where do you go but where do you go about purchasing singing bowls well uh, I sell uh, the Tibet the uh, I don't sell the Tibetan bowls I sell the, the quartz crystal bowls um, people can go to quartz sing, or singing crystal singing bowls.com and that takes them to one of the sites that are available and, and, I, and, I work with the gemstone infused bowls I have one here. I'll show you what it looks like because I don't work with the Tibetan ones anymore. This is a 12 inch bowl. I don't know if you can hear that tone because of the algorithms in Zoom, but it's a deep, deep tone. Yeah, I think, I think we can hear it. It looks, it sounds deep, yeah. Yeah, very deep. So those are the bowls that I like to work with just because the quality of the quartz is so high that the frequency is um, corresponding and entraining with the quartz structure in our own bodies. Ah, okay. Our bodies carry quartz silica. Uh, so, so the website, uh, Jen, if you could type up the website, uh, what, it's called quartz. Uh, uh, CrystalSingingBowls.com. I crystal. sell them on my website, SoundShifting.com. Okay. So, um, if they were to call uh, or reach out to me I could then shepherd them through the process yeah I think I, I've asked you before about bowl information I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do that yeah, <laughs> myself yeah. um Christine also has a good question Christine too thank you Ronnie for your question too um Christine asks are there sounds we can teach kids this is really a good question are there sounds we can teach kids uh struggling with attention focus issues and I would add kids in general like you know for for overall you know getting them away from the screens right because that's another yes 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 <laughs> Well, uh, uh, an automatic one is humming. They love to hum uh, and just they can in, invite them to make up their own humming sounds, but making sure their mouths are closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can go anywhere. They yeah. will go exactly where their body wants. Another tone would be ah. So just ah. Uh, uh, yeah. My sister who was a second grade teacher, a special needs teacher, would raise her hand and make the sound of ah, and have all the kids join in. As soon as they would hear her or see it and make the sound, their hands would go up. That way she knew that everybody's attention was in one place, but also all the brains were in training. Yeah. So the brains were now in group entrainment, collectively able to receive more information. Yeah, and I, I think as parents, and, and, and I, have, I have kids as well, and I, I think um, we're often our own, the, the way to teach kids is to do it ourselves and to be, be a model, you know, for, you know, so so I'll, I'll, I'll make songs out of like regular conversation. My kids are like, why are you, why are you doing that? You know, but it's like <laughs> I'm humming, great. humming, just like, you know, in the kitchen right. and stuff. And, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, being an example, like that's, 
you know, that's who we are, we're vibration. And, you know, just, just kind of that message by doing that, you know, for our kids or with our kids, it's yes. telling them it's okay to do that. You know, it's, it's well, okay it's to- It's creating a collective that. piece, a, a, an experience with mom and dad. In fact, we have had great effect um, uh, with the autistic community, mm. making it sound together. Nice, that's so, a great, great uh, because idea. Because yeah. aut autism has a, you know, anywhere on the spectrum, the sequencing of the brain is is very different, but sound sequences everybody together in one field. So yes. um, having as a parent, just making a sound uh, in the bathtub, in the whatever, start making a sound and, and have your child join you with that sound. Any of the soft vowels, a, a, e, o, e. And don't worry about a primordial tone. That can be a private practice that you yeah. do. And, and it's very powerful to make your own sound, right? You know, sometimes we feel like in society, oh, you know, it's sort of at our, our, our control or, you know, things are, you know, forces that we don't, we can't have control or that are, you know, people feel suppressed and different things are happening in the world. And I think this is kind of bringing us back to our own power and our own understanding that we can heal ourselves, you know, with with the power of nature of, you know, how we were created here to, uh, to kind of uh, help heal ourselves, so. Well, Exactly. And I think the body knows what it needs and it will indicate to the therapist or the, the, uh, the doctor or the practitioner, uh, it'll be obvious. When you start working with these sounds, you're starting to tune your own human instrument, which means you will also align with mm. the doctor. You will, if you need a doctor, uh, mm -hmm. because we're not here to suffer and yeah. medicine is here to, to help us as right. is a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist. Right. When we're working with tone and sound and the vagus nerve, we're also able to resequence uh, through sound, scrambling the, the neural networks that are creating trauma triggers. Mm. So yeah. the benefits wow. are still being unlocked. We're still yeah. finding because we don't have the instrumentation to really measure the full scope. Inner, inner treasure, inner treasure. Yeah. Mustafa, uh, good to see you again too, Mustafa and Amber. Um, Mustafa asked, um, is there a CD for sound chakras that we can practice with? Yes, there is. I have one that's on uh, uh, Apple Music or uh, iTunes or something. we call it today. Yeah. Uh, iTunes. Um, but you can go to my website, uh, soundshipping.com, and there's a gift me button. It's a free gift. Uh, and you will get um, a PDF of these primordial tones that is spelled out, they're explained with videos that, that uh, YouTube videos that of me doing these sounds. And I think um, you, you have a lot of your uh, CDs online too. I bought quite a few of your CDs, so they're really yeah, great. I just definitely can recommend those, the yeah, ball CDs. Right, yeah. so Sounds True carries all of, of that. Uh, mm -hmm. as well as everything's on Spotify, uh, Pandora, uh, purchasing on iTunes, Apple Music. So it's, uh, it's all on all platforms. Um, but in terms of the, the, sh the primordial tones, I think the YouTube videos are very helpful for people to, to okay. although they don't happen sequentially, it's each specific video on each one. But, um, uh, you know, you could also join my... Um, Facebook group, the Resounding Body, and I'll be producing more videos there. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm definitely joining that. Um, yes. Charlotte, welcome. Uh, Charlotte asked, uh, "Do you do workshops online for people that uh, to learn more about using these tones for healings? Do you do online workshops?" Thank you, Charlotte, for this question. Uh, not yet, and yes, it's in the pipeline. So, uh, so stay tuned. In fact. Um, if we do, uh, I'm planning to do some Facebook Live uh, as well as uh, online classes. Great. So yes, thank you for uh, for that. Uh, it's thank coming. you, Charlotte. Um, Stay tuned. Thank you, Mustafa, for those questions. Ronnie asked, "What sound is the root?" I think you were saying that it's it's individualized. I think. With well, it's it's the deepest tone you can make, okay. and the vowel shape is U U H, because that's what these tones, these tonal architectures are. These are the depending vowels. on the person, they'll, they'll be deeper or not as deep, depending. Right. But it's, it's their deepest. It's their deepest at that moment, and it, ugh, relative to it's relative. It's as vowel. though okay. you are the jolly green giant making that big, <gasps> or Santa. <gasps> 
that sound <laughs> is originated from the gut, from the intercostal muscles. Yeah. The Santa yeah. sound. I like that. It's kind yeah. of... <laughs> <laughs> um, any books you recommend on the subject uh, on uh, sound healing in general? Well, I have a book out now. Um, it's called Sound Shifting, but I'm completing a book. So that will be out next year. Oh, nice. uh, what, what are you writing on? Uh, next? I'm writing about really going deeper into uh, resonance and the body and uh, mm. all the, how we really are healing in this 21st and beyond century. Yeah, so, I can't wait to pick that up and read that. Yeah, it's a new paradigm. We're exploring. Yes. Yeah, I mean, really, really, uh, that's how, you know, we think about in, in medicine, we think about magnetic resonance imaging, like MRIs, you know, and how right. the, the, the cells are vibrating and the particles around the cells are vibrating. So then the MRI kind of changes the polarity of the different yeah. cells. And you can do that with sound too. You can basically Absolutely. And we are our own best healers. Right. Um, so that we, if, if, for instance, I'm needing to take medicine, my sound will help me absorb the right amount and release the rest. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really understanding that even though you need to take a certain uh, prescription for a period of time, you know, Western medicine is not the bugaboo, the, the, you know, the, the bad, you know, a lot of people in the healing arts have a fear around Western medicine. Mm -hmm. and I would say we just let go of that fear. It, it needs to be integrative, whatever you need at the time for to get your results. And, you know, it may, it may change over time, but yeah. All integrative approach. Yes. Yes, I, I agree. Um, yeah. And, and I think the other thing from a, a, you know, biochemistry or physiology point of view is that when sound enters the body and it's healing, it shifts the macrophages to a more anti-inflammatory type of white blood cell. So that it basically strengthens your immune system, yes. allows it to not over inflame, which is what you see in COVID. So I think, I think that's really key right. too. Yeah, the, the best antidote to COVID right now is to don't stress. So let your sounds help you when you start to feel that rise up and the adrenals start to get fired off. Just ah, uh, and then say something out loud that tells the body how it's working. I'm in a state of well-being. That yeah, that Festival is that is totally crazy, works. I, I do not, that too. I'm I say fine. message. Yeah, it totally works. Um, Jim, thank you, Trish. Uh, Jim, Jim was asking about. Uh, this is a great uh, question too. Um, Jim is enjoying this. Thank you, Jim, for coming on today as well. I'm listening here. Um, one, he's wondering how the bowls relate to the vocalizing. I, I guess like. Maybe, and Jim, you can um, type in more if this is not the right interpretation, but uh, maybe ringing the bowls and then vocalizing with it, or do you want to have, do you use the bowls to provide the pitches or to enhance the effect That's of the great question, Jim, and thank you for asking that. What the bowls do is help to create greater absorption in the body that then is influenced by the sound that you make, the voice that you produce because it's the voice producing all the various codes, but it's the harmony from the bowl that's allowing the body to create more space in the body. It's you're creating greater absorption. When you have greater capacity for absorption of information, it means that your, your body is able to access what your cells already know. When you're stressed, the body compresses, the brain compresses, the neural network shuts down, nothing flows back and forth. When you start to play the bowl, you're getting auditory stimulation, which is also, if it's a crystal bowl, you're also getting direct conduction through your skin and bones uh, that is helping the body to, because it's synchronizing with the crystal structure in your own body. It helps the body to open, relax, receive. Uh, speaking your of which, Lisa, Lisa would like uh, you to play the bowls if you have, if you have the, I know you were concerned about the sound. It seems to be kind of transmitting fine. I don't know. Oh, good. Well, you, you I'll try a different one. I have a, a bowl that's made out of kyanite here. So this is a 10 inch size bowl. And the one I played earlier was a 12 inch size bowl. Um, back here, another 10 inch 
it has a different pitch. Each ball has its own voice. So uh, though it's, it's laid out through the chromatic scale, I tend to listen rather than uh, read about what works. So sometimes bowls in different pitches that don't normally through music theory match and yet they create something that's utter deliciousness. So I always encourage people to listen to the, th the thing that makes them or the harmonies, the complexity of harmonies that makes them light up, that brings them such joy. That's it's really it's life. really food and nourishment for the cells you know the vibration to Absolutely. get realignment there um um Alyssa asks what is the best time of day or a good ritual to create for uh, i guess for sound healing that's a wonderful question too i like to start my day with it and end my day with doing these tones uh and then throughout the day you know if i'm in a stressful situation um then I hum or I make sound, you know, open vowel of some sort. But I like to start the day because it sets the tone, it sets the rhythm, and I recognize then that this is how I'm moving forward, which means that it also changes my broadcast frequency because we're mm -hmm. broadcasters. We are broadcasting energy. If somebody's stressed, we can feel it in their body. So it starts the way, it starts the day with an easy flow. And then throughout the day, you collect energy. Other people's moods affect us and we store them. So I like to do it at the end of the day before I go to bed. So that releases um, their energy from my, from my field. Kind of like brushing your teeth, right? And brushing your teeth twice <laughs> <Right>. a day. <laughs> a good soul flossing. <laughs> right, soul flossing. Yes, uh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Alyssa. And um, yeah, during, during meditation in the morning might be a good time to, to do that. Um, Ian asked, uh, during lockdown, um, uh, she's been listening to digital sound baths, um, I, 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 I guess, uh, I guess you know, online. Do the vibrations carry well across the recording medium? <laughs> and then we talked about that in addition to Zoom, or is it preferable to hear from the bulls directly? That is a great question. The answer is yes, it carries. It doesn't carry directly as fast. If I'm in the room with a bull, I am getting an immediate um, direct influence. Uh, but with digital uh, sound, you're still getting the complexity of the harmonies. So those harmonic, that harmonic information is, is still being received by the body, though it's happening at a slower pace. You're still getting all of it though. So, so don't, um, don't worry. You know, you can listen to the download and, uh, or an MP4. We used to argue that you're not getting enough quality your cells are, you, your auditory system is receiving that information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and I think, I think you know, again, it's, it's vibration and a lot of times, uh, you know, energy and vibrations are non-local also. You know, it's, it's where... Right, right. And for those who may not completely, uh, totally understand what I mean by downloading, you know, sound carries information and that information is, um, it comes through harmonics and, uh, and codes, you know, the harmonics carry, carry all of that. That's stored in the plasmic body. It's stored in the auric field. Uh, it's stored in the, um, in the, in the visceral uh, tissues and bones. So all of your body is storing that particular information. Yeah, and then so this whole idea of like food is information, sunlight is information, thoughts are information, sound is information, right? We know that the things that we put in our bodies, whether it's food, you know, fresh food, uh, uh, plant and, you know, plant and you know, fruit and vegetables, getting some sunlight, you know, the thoughts we, you know, the, to, to raise our vibrations, you know, things, and then, and then sound, all of that is nourishment to the body. We want to use that to our advantage versus our disadvantage in terms of, you know, building up our systems and making our uh, systems more resilient too. And the, the piece about sound is the, it's cumulative. So the mm -hmm. more you work with sound, the more you make a sound, the, the, it's like you're building uh, new synapses and a new sort of uh, sound muscle that allows the body to um, become more, even more resilient. And resilience is the name of the game. So we're improving resonance and your capacity to move forward and create from that uh, resilient state is, is what the, is the goal. So as we move through this period of, of the pandemic, 
don't let it um, swallow you up. And if if this whole period- I'll, I'll be right back. Keep on talking. Someone knocked at my door. Thank you. This period of uh, political um, uh, storm that's moving around, you know, you can certainly be, uh, you know, observe what's going on, but let yourself perpetually release it, let it go. It's like, we know that we are influencing outcomes just by the very nature of our own expectations. So when we start to change our expectation from one of fear, one of protection, uh, into a state of knowing that we're in flow, that we are part of nature, and nature unfolds in a most harmonious way, then there's our, then there's our new broadcast frequency. And that frequency is able to uh, inform um, others that are either around us or remotely beyond because sound is immediate. It's also nonlinear. So which, I can which, uh, yeah. which, which radio station are you listening to, right? <laughs> you can choose your right, own station. Right. Which one are you on? Are you on yeah. the Oh My God channel? <laughs> or are you on the uh, WOMG? Is it what's or it? are you on the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Chill channel? So maybe the WOMG versus the WELL channel? <laughs> <laughs> right. <You're right. laughs> Just uh, getting back from vacation, trying to do some jokes here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good to see everyone. Great to see you, Trish. And um, so so glad, so thankful, grateful for you to be on here. This has been amazing. Um, hope to have you on again uh, sometime. And uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, fans of Trish, I know are on here too, and our uh, patients here at CIH. Thank you so much for for coming, everyone, today. And look forward to seeing you again soon. Likewise. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.